So here is the stem. I think everyone can read it. Just for the recording, I might just read it out loud anyway. Uh, you are in the pre-admission clinic. Uh, your next patient is a 34-year-old female booked for a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy to manage her obesity. Her surgery is scheduled in six weeks. And you can see the medications there. There's ambrosentin, sildenafil, etanolol, erbisartan, escitalopram, ketiapine, and levothyroxine. The vital signs, height uh, 152, uh, weight 127 kilos, BMI is 55, blood pressure 135 over 75, heart rate 87 beats per minute, and SATs are 90%, 94% on room air. Based on the information available, what medical conditions are you concerned about? And normally you'd get some reading time, obviously, but um, we, we might as well crack on there. Um, so Meg, based on the available information, what medical conditions are you concerned about? Based on the sildenafil and ambisartan, I'm most concerned that this patient has moderate or severe pulmonary hypertension, given that she is on an endothelin-1 antagonist. The fact that she's on a tenolol and ibisartan also makes me wonder whether she's got an underlying cardiac condition, which may either be a cause or a consequence of her pulmonary hypertension. And the ibisartan uh, and, the ibisartan and um, levothyroxine make me wonder whether she's got an autoimmune condition, which may cause this. So given that she's severe, likely severe in a 34-year-old, uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension would certainly be a differential. Um, the fact uh, that she is morbidly obese, uh, however, raises the other question of OSA-related pulmonary hypertension. The isotelopram and quetiapine, um, it is not uncommon for patients with a chronic um, condition, especially a chronic severe condition, to have an underlying um, or a coexisting uh, mental health diagnosis as well. Okay, what would you want to know on history to assess the severity and stability of her pulmonary hypertension? So I'd like to know um, when this was diagnosed and when she became first symptomatic, especially in terms of shortness of breath. Um, I want to know what the cause of the diagnosis was. So I think I've mentioned a couple of those already. So autoimmune, uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension or related to her OSA or other conditions such as left heart dysfunction. Um, I would like to know what symptoms she had at the time of the diagnosis and now, especially I'd like to know um, if she's got some shortness of breath um, on exertion or symptoms related to right ventricular dysfunction. I'd like to know about any exacerbations and whether these required hospital, um, hospital admissions and whether these have been um, associated with uh, right ventricular dysfunction, um, such as significant peripheral edema or fluid overload. I'd like to know what treatments she has. We've already discussed her medications, um, but I'd want to know about any other coexisting treatments that she may have trialed, um, such as immunomodulation or prednisolone, for example, or conditions or, or treatments of her underlying condition. So, for example, if she had scleroderma, I'd want to know about any treatments related to gastroesophageal reflux, for example. I'd like to know about her compliance with treatment and any side effects related to her treatment. Uh, I want to know what respiratory physician or rheumatologist that she sees um, and whether, whether she was, has been reviewed recently. Finally, I'd like to apply a severity ranking scale, um, such as NYH class um, or her um, dyspnea score. Um, and I'd want to know... Um, uh, sorry, and I want to know uh, whether, you know, given that this is a severe condition, um, whether she has an advanced care directive. Right. Now, what would you look for on an examination for pulmonary hypertension? So first of all, I would conduct a generalised inspection. I would want to look at her work of breathing. I would look for a peripheral and central cyanosis, and I would look for any attached devices. So knowing that this woman has saturations of 94% on room air, I'd look to see whether or not she has any oxygen attached. I would next inspect the hands. I'd look for palmopella, but I would also look for a cause of her disease. So I would look to see whether she has any sclerodactyly, calcinosis, or Raynaud's disease that may be present in an autoimmune condition. Um, I would feel for the character, rate, and rhythm of her pulse, noting that if she has right ventricular dysfunction, she may be in AF. I would look for the height and waveform of her JVP, so looking for elevation, looking for a loss of A wave in AF, and looking for a sharp Y descent um, or elevated V wave as may be present in tricuspid regurgitation. I would next look at the face. So I'd be looking for signs of, say, um, tightening of the skin um, or any changes such as a malign rash, which may be present in lupus, giving me an idea again of the cause of the, her disease. I would palpate um, her precordium, feeling for a right ventricular heave in particular and auscultating for a murmur of tricuspid regurgitation, which is pansystolic. I would next move to the lungs. So I'd look for any coarse crepitations at the bases, indicating left ventricular dysfunction and pulmonary edema, but also looking for any um, fine crepitations that may be present in interstitial lung disease. Next, moving to the abdomen, I would palpate for an enlarged and pulsatile liver, and I would look for any signs of um, hepatic congestion, although I wouldn't expect to find these. 
Finally, I look at her legs for signs of elevated venous pressure and um, pitting edema as may be present um, in a patient with right ventricular dysfunction as a result of her um, pulmonary hypertension. In terms of bedside tests, I'd be performing an ABG on room air, calculating her AA gradient and looking for elevated bicarbonate as may be present in a patient with um, OSA, but also obesity hypoventilation, indicating again a cause of her disease. Finally, I would conduct a peak flow test, looking for signs of restrictive or obstructive lung disease as a potential cause of her pathology. Now, what investigations would you like to see? So in terms of um, basic laboratory tests, I'd like to see a full panel of bloods, an FBE, UEC, um, LFTs, um, COAGs, and an NT probe, probe BNP. I'd be interested to see if she has, for example, an anemia of chronic disease. I'd be interested to see if she has underlying renal dysfunction as well as potentially a part of um, uh, cardiorenal syndrome or other um, pathology. Noting, interestingly, that she's on ibesartan. If she does have something like scleroderma, it would be interesting to see if she's got renal impairment as this is often prescribed to patients who've had a um, sclerodermal renal crisis. In terms of cardiac investigations, I would like to see an ECG um, looking for signs of right ventricular strain and the rhythm. So, for example, AF. I'd like to see a TTE um, calculating um, the, her RBSP using her tricuspid regurgitation jet and assessing her over, overall biventricular function. I'd like to see a right heart catheter calculating her mean pulmonary artery pressure, but also her pre and post capillary pressures. Um, I would like to see in terms of um, respiratory tests, I'd like to see a sleep study, and I would also like to see a um, pulmonary function test looking for signs of um, a reduced DLCO as is present in pulmonary hypertension, but also uh, underlying respiratory disease as a cause of her condition. Now, what would you expect to see on her 12-lead ECG? So she may have a resting tachycardia, she may be in a rhythm other than sinus, and she may have signs of um, uh, right heart strain, which would include um, the S1, Q3, T3 pattern, um, but also an elevated V wave in, um, sorry, an elevated R wave in V1 um, and deep T wave inversion in V1, 2 and 3. And what rhythm other than sinus would you expect? She may be in AF. Um, yep. Um, please interpret this ECG. For this ECG, so there's a lot of things that I had expected. Um, there is certainly um, some T wave inversion and Q waves in uh, lead three, and there is a deep S wave in uh, lead one. In terms of the one, two, and three, there is the um, deeply inverted, um, uh, uh, yeah, deeply inverted T waves. There is an elevated R wave in V one, um, and just with the eye of faith, it looks like she may meet criteria of. I think she does meet criteria for people manale, um, as may be expected if she had right atrial dilatation. Mm, okay. What do you expect to see on her ABG? So I would expect that to see an elevated AA gradient. Um, and then, as I mentioned, if she has obesity hyperventilation syndrome, I would expect to see an elevated bicarbonate. Good. And here is the ABG on room air. Um, please interpret it. So she certainly does have an elevated AA gradient. I'm sorry, I'd have to calculate that to give you an exact number, but I would expect a normal PO2 uh, in a 34-year-old to be well above 95. Um, the bicarbonate, while slightly elevated, is not elevated to the extent that I would expect if obesity hyperventilation obviously was the cause of her um, pulmonary hypertension. So this makes me, again, think that it is more likely to be pulmonary arterial hypertension. And what do you expect to see on an echo? So I would expect to see um, that she would have at least mild to moderate um, tricuspid regurgitation, noting that mild TR or um, trivial TR is common in the in the usual population. I would expect that the maximum velocity of this would be increased, and that would give me an increased RVSP in absence of a right ventricular protract obstruction. She may have a dilated um, or um, concentrically remodeled right ventricle, a dilated right uh, atrium, and there may be some degree of biventricular dysfunction. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a transthoracic echo for you, but we do have a right heart, cat right heart catheter. What do you expect to see? So I'd expect, expect to see an elevated mean pulmonary arterial um, uh, pressure, um, and I would expect that her PBR may be elevated if this is indeed pulmonary arterial hypertension. If this is due to a left ventricular dysfunction or another cause, um, she may have an elevated pulmonary capillary wedge pressure had a wedge pressure been taken. Now, here are... Here is the report. Uh, what do you make of that? 
So her main pulmonary artery pressures. Now what's new with ABCs of Anesthesia is that we're forming a whole bunch of very comprehensive courses for every stage of your anesthetic journey, from medical student to procedural skills, from foundations in anesthesia, as well as really important exam lectures and clinical anesthesia courses as well.